you ever dined with the king? There is usually so much to eat. Have you ever been wooed by a king? By royalty? Won't you just say yes? This is a king's invitation. Don't you dare say no. Leave your dreams, experience heaven and earth, make this trip. Rendezvous spot, the Christ Family Assembly, Word Communication Ministries, Welcome. Number 1 Faith Drive off Kudati Avenue, Onireke GRA Ibadan. Dates, Sundays at 8 a.m. and Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. for an interactive session of Digging Deep into the Word of God, where you have the opportunity to ask questions. Dress code as you are. It's a wrong concept going to a prophet to find out what God is saying. And it's the prophet who is telling you for the first time what God is saying. It's a wrong concept. If you get direction from other people before you hear from the Lord, you may end up in confusion and be misled. It's a place to be belong and become or who we are created to be. Word Communication Ministries welcome experiencing life before death. So last week we began to examine divine guidance and we took our opening test from Isaiah 58 Isaiah 58 verse 11 A promise that all of us must lay hold upon. It says, the Lord will guide you continually. The Lord will guide you continually. The Lord will guide you continually. Not some of the time, all of the time. Other every circumstance, in any situation. Continually, without a break. That is our Lord. That is God's promise. That's God's intention. He wants to guide us continually. No break. And the consequence, it will satisfy your soul in drought. You cannot experience drought when God is guiding you. Wherever God guides you, there will be rain. There will be plenty. There will be supply. There will be peace. There will be joy. And then it says, and strengthen your bones. You can't be weak. When you are in God's leading, glory to God. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Praise God. You'll be fruitful, productive, effective when God leads you, when God guides you. You can't fail. There is no failure when we are guided by God. So when we experience drought failure, it's a sign that we might have missed God somewhere. And of course, in our present life, as we grow, as we learn, as we grow in our work with God, all of us experience failure at one time or the other. We miss him. We miss him one time or the other. But the ultimate, the ultimate place you want to go is getting to that place in your life where consistently all of the time you are in step with him and you don't miss him. That's where life becomes so sweet, so beautiful. You become super human. People will not be able to understand how you are accomplishing the things you are accomplishing because it's not really you, it's God walking through you. You never miss your target. You never fail. You are never weak. You are never disappointed. It's a realm of the ultimate life that God wants for us. May God get us there in Jesus' name. Man is finite, is limited in so many ways. By knowledge, by sight, by time, by space, by strength. 
that when God begins to lead you, all your limitations are eliminated. God's leading, God's guidance eliminates completely all our limitations. So this issue of divine guidance is one of the greatest blessings of being a Christian. Because we won't have to live our life by guesses. We won't have to live our life by gamble. We can be directed and guided by God in specific, specific ways to go and specific actions to take. And this makes us target shooters. Hallelujah. And eliminate wastage of time and wastage of resources. It eliminates being ineffective and being unproductive. So, that's why I encourage all of us to take this series very, very seriously. But I don't see many of you as taking this as seriously as you should. Then we look at a few more promises apart from Isaiah 58, 11, to just show us that the word of God is full of so many promises about divine guardians. And it shows how serious God is about this matter. Because always pay attention when God begins to repeat himself over one issue, giving so many promises. When we see those things, then those are things we should put our feet down and possess and seek and possess. Not things we just flip over. It means it must be critically important. Critically important. Psalm 32 verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Exodus 15, 13. You in your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You and I are the redeemed of God. You have guided them into your strength, to your holy habitation. Romans 8.14, for as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Isaiah 30.21, and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk you in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. And finally, for now, there are many more. Psalm 25, verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. So there is no doubt in it that God wants to lead us. God wants to guide us if we are willing to be led, to be guided by God. Praise God. I sounded a warning when it comes to divine guidance that there are two main pitfalls that we must avoid. Intellectual objectivity, intellectual objectivity, that is a situation where you don't accept anything unless it's logical and intellectually acceptable. Sometimes when God leads us, it may not look logical, it may look, not look intellectually acceptable. Right? Intellectual objectivity rejects all subjective Christian experiences. It will do nothing unless it is logical, rational, intellectually plausible and reasonable. An intellectually objective person will never experience a lot of miracles. He will not experience the miracle of Peter. Jesus said, come. 
and he stepped on water. <laughs> and intellectually objective person say, ah, oh me man here, I think he will be rationalizing it. But Peter didn't rationalize because he could see that this is the Lord speaking. So he took a step and he walked on water. And in the midst of water, he tried to rationalize and he started sinking. Then the second pitfall to avoid is intuition subjectivity. Intuition subjectivity. Right? This borders on dangerous mysticism. You know, there are people who want to mystify everything. Right? The subjective mystic may not eat fruit for breakfast unless he hears a voice from heaven. Eh? Scientifically, it's been proved that eating fruit for breakfast is good for our health. Right? You don't need to hear a voice from heaven, but someone who is mystically subjective we say, ah, God has not yet told me. They won't get to tell them. Some are not in service today because God didn't tell them to go to church. <laughs> God has already said, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves together. God has established it. There are certain things God has established. Right? But the subjective mystic who will abandon that and still wants to hear a voice from heaven, praise God. It's the subjective mystery will not give money to his suffering parent because God has not yet told him. And God didn't tell him to give money to his suffering parent. Eh? He's not yet led. Praise God. So they make everything super spiritual. There is need for us to maintain a balance between these two. There are some intuitive subjective experiences that we have. There are various voices we hear. But we must test them to discern which one is God and which one is not. So we move on to seven ways God can lead us. And I think I started on the first one, which is inward conviction. The still, or what some other people may call, the still, small voice. Beloved brethren, this is the beginning of God's leading. This is the beginning. This is where it starts with each and every one of us. That inward leading, that inward impression, that still small voice. That is where God's leading begins. And once you miss it from this point, you can be misled. You can be misled. That inward conviction or inner witness of the Holy Spirit. For most spiritually minded Christians is the starting point. When you have that inward conviction or assurance, all other ways that we are going to teach are actually confirmation of this one. So when you omit this one, and then you are looking for the other ways of leading, you can miss God. For instance, for many years, 
I knew in my spirit, in, internally, that God was calling me into ministry. But I hated ministry. I didn't want to be in ministry. Because to me in those days, to be in ministry was equivalent to poverty. And I didn't want to be poor. So I was running away from God for many years. And God was dealing with me and I was being stopped. But I knew. One day, one of our leaders in the fellowship in Unilag then called me. By that time, he was out of Unilag. I was spending an extra year. So he called me. He had a meeting in Lagos. He called me and said, he just wanted to ask me that he had had this feeling and revelation that God is calling me to ministry. That do I know? I said, I knew. I've known for years. He said, well, but if he's the first to call me and say God is calling me and I base my coming into ministry on that, I could miss God. Friends, if your answer to the call of God is because somebody called you and prophesied and said God is calling you into ministry, <laughs> you can be misled. For instance, your pastor, if you are a very effective person, you are very resourceful and very useful in the ministry, right? Your pastor can see vision for you and say, God, brother, God is calling you. Why? Because you are very useful, you are getting results for him, you are helping him. But God doesn't call you because you are talented, you are gifted, you are resourceful. Right? That's not why God calls you. A lot of times God calls some people you won't even <laughs> want to use if you are a pastor. And of course, sometimes also he can call people who are very resourceful, who are very uh, uh, intelligent. So, if you depend on what your pastor says or what somebody says, you can be misled. God can make you resourceful, useful, you know, powerful for some other reasons other than being called into full-time ministry. Some run to profit to get direction from the Lord. As if going to a sweet sayer or a fortune teller. It's a wrong concept. Going to prophet to find out what God is saying. And it's the prophet who is telling you for the first time what God is saying. It's a wrong concept. If you get direction from other people before you hear from the Lord, you may end up in confusion and be misled. And many have been misled that way. Stop running to prophets. Right? Take time to be in the presence of the Lord until God puts an impression, an inner conviction in you. The prophetic ministry in the church is for confirmation. It is not to set the direction for your life. The prophetic ministry in the church is to confirm what God is already saying to you in your spirit is not to set direction from your life. No matter how accurate the, the prophet is, if he's the one making you to know for the first time how your life should go, my friend, take it easy. You could be wrong. 
there is a need for you to have had a personal inner conviction from God. And then you are thinking it, you are ruminating about it, it's on your mind. Yes, you are not sure about it. And then you are in church and a prophet just speaks and he confirms exactly what you have been. That's what prophecy in church, the prophetic ministry is. It's not to suggest to you, right? It's not a prophet who should tell you for the first time and say, ah, Mr. Raji, your wife is uh, sister what? Sister Inga. You never thought about Sister Inga? Sister Inga never came to your mind? You have no impression towards her? It's just the prophet who rose in the church and said, Brother Raji, Sister Inga is your husband. The marriage may not work. Are you with me? It's a wrong concept. But if Brother Raji has been spying Sister Yinka, and his heart has always been there, he's been thinking about it, he's been coming to his mind, and then the prophet just met them and said, hey, this is what God is saying. And he confirms exactly what's been in your heart, you've been thinking about, praying about, that's it. Are you getting it? So let's be careful. Let's look at an example in Acts chapter 16, verse 10. And after he has seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Paul was already thinking about Macedonia. Maybe God wanted them to go or not. Maybe God wanted them to go or not. And then he now, uh, now saw in the vision a man saying, Come unto Macedonia and help us. Oh, immediately he knew that now there is no doubt. This idea we've had of going to Macedonia is of God. That's how it works. I can never overemphasize that inward witness. That is where all leading begins. But then, you don't rely on one single experience of leading. After you have that inward witness, one of the other six, or two, at least two of the other six, two of, at least two of the other six I'm going to mention, must confirm that inner witness before you can say, I'm sure. Am I talking? Are you getting it? Now, this teaching is not about my duty to preach every Sunday. I want to pass something across. I want to get you to a point where regularly in your life, you can know that you know that you know God is leading you. So you need to respond. Because if you don't respond, you are indicating you are not getting me. And if you are not getting me, I will keep repeating myself. Eh? Until I open your head and I put it inside. <laughs> because I don't want us to miss God again. How wonderful it would be to lead a church where every sin knows how to hear God. It will reduce many things. We won't be running helter skelter. Hey, one brother is in the hospital. Oh, one had accident. But because before the accident happened, God would have said, don't go. He will wake up in the morning, he was preparing to go for that journey, and there is this confusion in his spirit, he's just feeling like not going. And then he opens the scripture, that day and the word hit him, saying, don't go. He won't go. And there are 
and it won't be in that accident. And there won't be a phone call to the pastor making him running helter-skelter, grieved, disturbed. So I want to pastor a people who really know how to hear God. Friends, I'm taking this seriously because we have lost a lot in our lives as a result of this thing. The Christ Family Assembly Word Communication Ministries Welcome Number 1 Faith Drive Off Kudati Avenue Onireke GRA Ibadan Dates Sundays at 8am And Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30pm For an interactive session Of digging deep into the Word of God Where you have the opportunity to ask questions Dress code as you are It's a place to be Belong And become all who are created to be Word Communications Ministries welcome experiencing life before death.